I thought he was going to roast me. All right. I'm going to nickname Sean. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm kind of excited to be here and, and you know, to, to share with you guys and, you know, a little nervous as usual. But um, like, like he was saying, you know, my, my previous work schedule kind of pulled me away from recovery. You know, like I was only hitting two meetings a week. I was working nights. And I was just dead tired, constantly dead tired, and I just didn't want to do anything, you know? So, like, it affected my recovery negatively. And, like, I've been at this new position now where I got my evenings back. And, like, since I've been in, the, I've been in this position for, th- for 15 days, like, I've been to 15 meetings, right? So, like, I've gotten back to that, that schedule of hitting a meeting a night, you know? Um, I'm probably going to go to another meeting after this. But... <sighs> But, like, that's what this program is about, you know? Like, lost dreams awaken and new possibilities arise, you know? And, like, that's my favorite line in in the basic text. And, like, yes, I've gotten the opportunity um, to grow through, you know, staying clean and working with my sponsor and, and, you know, putting some step work in my life. Like, I've learned that that I I can gain these things, you know? And, you know, when, when, when someone gets up and shares, they're supposed to be sharing some hope, right? And, like... Sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll second guess myself and my disease will hit me and say like, well, what hope do you have to deliver? I mean, I can tell you like the hope shot for me is for me is the fact that like after having two years clean, I relapsed the day after having two years clean, stayed out for six years, came back and I'm celebrating two years clean this Friday, awesome. you know, and like that, no cl- I got to get there first, but um, you know, <clears throat> that right there is is the hope shot for me right like I know I can go home like and just be proud of myself and look at myself in the mirror and not hate myself because like when I was on that six year run there was literally a six month period of time where like I wouldn't go into my bathroom right because I didn't want to look at myself in the mirror you know and like I wouldn't go shower I wouldn't go shave I wouldn't do anything because I didn't want to look at myself in the mirror right like I've never been homeless but I've brought that homeless feeling and homeless vibe into my house right like you know my friend always says like I never lived under a bridge but I brought the bridge into my house you know and like and that's what it was and like I had to hit a bottom and I hit a bottom and you know what like thankfully that bottom brought me back to NA you know and and, like the one thing about me is is, like I love Narcotics Anonymous and there's there's a couple guys in this room that have known me 10, 10, 11 years now um, and they watched me struggle, and they watched me come back. And, like, there was also a lot of people when I would try and come back and get a white key tag. Oh, well, what's going to be different this time, Sean? You know, what are you going to do now? What are you going to do differently? And every time I would have some really, really slick answer for them. And, like, this time when I came back, every, you know, a couple people came up to me with, like, an attitude. Like, oh, what's going to be different this time? And I said, I don't know. I'm just done. Mm. You know, like, I... I I don't give a fuck what you think. Like, I'm done. Like, I'm here for me. Um, Like, I don't let anyone's judgment push me out of a meeting or push me out of the room. I don't care. Like, I really just don't care what people think, you know, um, as far as me being in the room of Narcotics Anonymous. If somebody wants to have an opinion of me, that's good. That's for them. Like, I'm here to save my life. Like, and I realize that now. And it took me 10 years to figure that out. It took me 10 years to figure out that, like, I belong in Narcotics Anonymous, right? And the, like that kind of goes into the steps, and but like I have to talk about my relapse when I talk about steps one, two, and three because like I stopped practicing them, right? I stopped practicing one, two, and three um, when I relapsed. Like I forgot that I was powerless over my addiction, so I let my addiction take the power. You know, I forgot that I had a higher power, and I and I gave the higher power, the, I gave the drugs that that higher power back over me, and then I took my will back and I was living how I wanted to, and I, like I used. And the thing is, is, like, when I relapsed, and I talk about sponsorship, like, when I relapsed, the main thing for me was is I stopped talking to my sponsor, right? Like, my relapse started six months before I picked up, right? It's, it, it started six months before I picked up. And, um, you know, I remember something happened in my life, and, and you know, it was, it was a little hectic. And, and I said, you know what, like, and none of my friends in NA wanted to help me because they were like, yo... We're telling you, get out of that situation. Just get out. Run now. And I was like, no, I'm holding on. You know, and like right then and there, I took my will. And I was holding on. And I gave another person 
the power over me, you know, and like I was holding on, I'm trying to save this person, I'm trying to save this person, you know, and then, you know, six months later, I ha- happened to be walking down Las Olas in, you know, in Fort Lauderdale and those, the, the bar girls that are holding out those test tube shots, you know, the, the <laughs> shots that are in the test tube, she walked right up to me and, and with two years and one day clean, I took one, right, and that was it, right, and all because I stopped practicing my steps in my life, you know. But, I, you know, I'm going to talk about my sponsor a little bit. And, you know, there's some people in this room that know my sponsor. And, and you know what? Like, the relationship that I have with my sponsor, you know, in our literature it says our sponsor is a guide through the 12 steps. Right? And, and that's, that's a sponsor's ultimate purpose is, is our guide through the 12 steps. But I also have a bond and a trust with my sponsor. Right? Like, I love my sponsor. I know I can tell him anything. And it stays between me and him. You know, and like minus the other shit, like we go fishing together and, and, um, you know, we, you know, his, his, him and his wife come over to my house for dinner and, and I go over to their house for dinner and, you know, we do all these things and like we have this amazing bond and this amazing friendship. And the crazy thing is, right, like he is a Vietnam vet who's only shot heroin, like, and I'm a crackhead from Miami. Right. And, and like, so we're two completely opposite. Like he's a biker um, from, the, from the hood. Like, you know what I mean? And, and so, but the thing is, is like we mesh, you know, and like he has what I want. Like, and, and when, like, when I, when I, when I sit here and I, you know, I talk about a sponsor having what you want, like I know when I selected my sponsor and like, he's been my sponsor since ba- way back when I had the fir- my, my first run in recovery. And when I came back this time, I had another sponsor. And I got to a point in my recovery with that spon- in my step work with that sponsor, and I just didn't trust him to go over the go over my four step with him. I did not trust him. Love him to death. He's a great guy, and I just I just didn't trust him to do a fifth step with him. So, you know, I talked to my current sponsor. I told him what was going on, and he says, "That's fine, but you have to go tell him that you aren't comfortable in the in the sponsor in the sponsor you sponsor relationship." And part ways with him. He's like, I'm not going to let you just not stop, just stop calling him. He's like, that's addict behavior to just avoid somebody, you know? And like, so I, that was my first assignment was to break up with him. Um, and you know, like now, like with my sponsor that I have now and like, like, yeah, I'm slacking on my step work a little bit, but like I said, I could, I could have put in a lot more effort in, but I was letting my, my work schedule be an excuse. And, like, today I don't have to – like, I have no excuse left, right? Like, I have to put in some step work, you know? And, like, that's what my sponsor told me, you know? He's like, tomorrow I, – I haven't touched my step work in a month and a half. And, uh, you know, tomorrow I'm going over my step with him just because he was like, that's it. You know, you have no more excuses. We're working steps now. It's time to get real. You're coming up on two years. Like, you got to start doing something, you know? And, and so – that's you know, Alan's laughing because he knows my sponsor, and um, you know, like, like that's the thing, and and like it goes back. You know, I talk about, you know, the the first step, right? We admitted that we were powerless. You know, like that right there. Like, I didn't even realize that until this time around. Like, I didn't realize that I was actually powerless. Like, my first time in recovery, I didn't get it, but like this time, I was so beaten. And I was so broken that I realized that I had no control over what was going on in my life. My life had become completely unmanageable, right? Like, my bottom was, you know, like, was seven days awake, smoking crack and flocka in a hotel room in, in Hialeah. And I purposely overdosed and accidentally lit the hotel room on fire. Like, who does that shit? You know what I mean? Like, and, like, that's my story, and that's my bottom, and, like, that was the last day I used. That was November 7th, 2017. Like, that was the last day I used, because I remember waking up after being revived. Like, I was revived in the parking lot of the hotel, got to, got to the hospital, and they put, you know, they intubated me, and I, and I remember waking up and pulling the tube out, looking around. Two cops pulled tasers on me, and I was handcuffed to the bed. And I looked around, I saw my mom and my sister crying, and I was like, you know what, like, I, I honestly, like, I just looked up and I was like, thank God I'm done. Like, someone has finally saved me from myself. Like, being strapped to that bed was the greatest feeling that I've ever had in my life. Because I knew I didn't have to do anything anymore. Like, I knew somehow, some way, I was going to be all right. 
And, you know, it, it's funny because the one of the cops that, that was spending, because they, they had to guard me every night before they handed me over to, to the Department of Corrections. And, you know, the cop, one of the cops, you know, he, he was just talking to me about, about you know, 12, the 12-step 12 programs. And he was just like, yeah, you know, you'd really do good. And then I told him my story. And he's like, man, you just got to get back into it. You're going to be all right. And, like, right then and there, that, like, that just proves to me, like, that I have a higher power. The fucking arresting officer, you know, <laughs> was talking to me about 12 steps. So, you know, like, that's something that, that you know, I, I have to look at. But, you know, my life was completely unmanageable. Completely unmanageable. And my life is still unmanageable today. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's I, I can handle it now and I don't use because of it. But, like, there's a lot of things in my life where, where you know, like, my temper will get me. You know, uh, especially when I'm driving. But, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but it is what it is. Like, I, you know, it's progress, not perfection. I hate that cliche, but, like, you know what it is? Like, I just get a chance to work on myself on a daily basis, you know, a day at a time. That's it. You know, like, just for today, I cannot act out on my, and you know, I cannot act out and then let my disease take over, you know. And I remember when I... When I first came around to speak on the second step a little bit, like, I'm not a religious person at all. Like, I, I'm not. Like, when I, was, when I was 11 years old, one of my close friends got shot and killed over a beeper case and a T-shirt, right? And I remember I was at his funeral. I said, man, why did this happen to him? And someone said, this is, it was all part of God's plan. And from that moment on, I had a resentment against God. Right, I had a resentment against religion. I had a resentment against, so like that wasn't my thing. And um, you know, I had a major problem with that. And I think I can, I can really say that like my first second step that I ever did was BS. Like I just I I I was one of those people like, well, you can make it a doorknob and you'll be fine. You know what I mean? But like, can't make your higher power doorknob. You know, it's, it doesn't work. But this time. I, I found I found a power greater than myself when I came back to Narcotics Anonymous, right? Like, I was loved and I was welcomed, you know, like by even people in this room, I was loved and welcomed. I had, of course, there was, you know, the ones that were just, you know, they, they'd they see me come back, pick up a white key tag. Because I, in that span of six years, I picked up 36 white key tags in six years. You know what I mean? So people saw me come in and out. People saw me in meetings high. People saw me, you know, getting high in the bathroom, you know, of, of the clubhouses. And, right, so, like, they, they formed this opinion of me, and that's all good because, like, I was that guy, right? And I'm still capable of being that guy. But, like, the, the fact of the matter is, is, like, I was loved back into this room, right? And I know, in, like, in the green and gold, you know, it, it talks about we greet each other with the same empathy reserved for survivors of the near near fatal catastrophe the same near fatal catastrophe right and like we survived you know what i mean and like i survived and and like people have welcomed me back and and loved me and like that's where i find my higher power like my whole this this last second step that i did the whole thing was based on the unconditional love of narcotics anonymous it wasn't the people it wasn't the literature wasn't that it was just the whole like the unconditional love that we get from some people and some we don't and that's okay you just have to pick and pick who you keep around you and like that's it like i have a very small circle but like my circle is strong you know and and i like i'm i'm not one of those guys i used to be the guy who used to know everybody run around hugging everybody now you see me in a meeting, I stay quiet, I hug a few people, and, and I just keep it moving. Because, like, I know the people I have in my life, if I show up and, like, hey, I need you, got you, you know? And the same goes for them. Like, I, I have friends that, like, I literally don't talk to for months on end. And then they'll hit me up on Facebook or, or shoot me a text or post some Facebook status. And I'll text them right away, hey, what's going on? You all right? You know, but like I don't talk to them for months and like we get that. That's our relationship. And like, that's OK, because like I'm not I don't know. I'm just I'm weird about being I'm just weird about constantly being in contact with people like my sponsor yells at me because I don't call him as much as I should. But my whole thing is, is like I don't like calling people. So what I did was is I adjusted my meeting schedule. So I see my sponsor at least three nights a week. 
you know like I, i've adjusted i've adjusted my life lately since i've gotten this since i've gotten this opportunity um to to change my my basically everything in my life has changed right now in the past <coughs> years and i've gotten this opportunity to mold my recovery you know and and the cool thing is is like before my recovery was revolving around my life now my life is revolving around my my recovery you know like my recovery is, is has become first again which to me was like an amazing thing and i'll i'll just talk about the third step and then you know i'll, I'll be done cuz i don't like taking up too much time with me but like for me and like this is all just for me you know like it, everybody has their own way of working the steps they have their own interpretation of the steps and like the most important thing is like you work them like that's it like the changes in the steps um for me like i lived in i don't know if you guys can relate to this but like i lived in self will when i was using right like everything i did was for my benefit and if it didn't go my way i would force it to go my way you know like i would force that square peg into a round hole i didn't care if i had to use three hammers like i would get that thing in there and um you know, like, and I can look back at so many examples and so many times in my life that, like, you know, I took my will back. But, like, every time I got high, knowing that I didn't want to, I mean, I don't know. Like, it just for me, you know, when I finally gave up, you know, on this on this last third step, like, when I finally, <laughs> when I finally gave up my will over to my higher power, like, it, it, it was a great feeling. And, you know... And the way that the way that I work my third step on a daily basis is just like, you know, my sponsor, he'll always like if I start like bitching at him, he'll be like, see, let me see your hands. Turn it over. You know, and he just flips my hands over. And, you know, that's that's something that like I've learned, you know, like when things just happen, I, I just lately I've just been like, kind of like, OK, you know, I, I work with people that like curse me out on a constant basis. Like I get yelled at, I get cursed at, you know, and like. <coughs> If I was living in my will, I'd smack the hell out of somebody, you know, but then I'd lose my job and, you know, it starts a whole thing. But, like, trust me, I want to, but now I just kind of look at them. It's like, whatever. You know, I'll take it out on someone on Facebook or something, you know. Yeah, but, like, that's, that's just what it is for me, you know. And, like, steps one, two, and three are very important to me. And, and like I said, like, I, I personally believe that that my relapse started when I stopped working steps one, two, and three. Like, I personally believe that for, for you know, for myself and my personal recovery. Like, I, that's why, like, I remain vigilant on, on those three steps especially. Um, but, you know, I don't have a favorite step. All the steps are my favorite, but, like, I, I really like, you know, I like one, two, and three. You know, they're, they're the power steps that, that open your mind up and get you ready for step four. But, um, you know, like with that, like if, if, you're, if you're new here, it, like if you, you're in your first Narcotics Anonymous meeting or, you know, or you're just coming back or you're just in so much pain and you can't believe that you actually made it to a meeting, like congratulations, you saved my life tonight because you just gave me hope that like we never have to use again even if we want to. Thank you for letting me share.